All right, you guys, let's do another boxing mistakes video. And I already have a couple of these up, but to make you feel extra special today, we're going to do 12 common mistakes. So 12 things that you are just absolutely screwing up in your boxing. We're going to cover them right now. Now, to be totally honest, not everything that I'm going to list here is a mistake. A lot of it is about awareness. If you are aware of what you're doing or you, if you are not. So especially as a beginner, you are doing the right things, but sometimes you're not aware of the other options or how always focusing on the right things isn't necessarily the best way to go about your training for the long run. So we're going to go over some straight mistakes and some considerations for your boxing training as well to help you sort of loosen up and undo some bad habits. Okay, beginner mistake number one. This is one of the most common ones I see, and that is using your head to pull the punch. In other words, turning your head to get power in the punch. And a lot of the times you don't even realize you're doing this, but especially on the lead hook, throwing that hand, and a lot of beginners are gonna use this head to pull their weight into the punch here. Ugh, because that head allows you to sort of get things going, start some leverage. If you're new, you're not used to this. Here, just working the lead hook. So you're gonna use that head to pull. And when you watch a lot of beginners, especially in a fight when they're really throwing the bombs, you're gonna see this. Now, a few things that are happening here. Number one, it uses up a lot of energy. Two is it throws off your balance. And three, it takes your eyes off your opponent. So you tend to start looking to where your head goes. So the way to fix this is just got to be conscious of it. You got to start here working <laughs> here. <laughs> now, there's going to be some head movement because of the rotation of the body, right? You're not always going to be perfect. All right, there is going to be a little bit of movement, but so the key is not whether there's movement, it's whether you're using your head to pull and make that movement happen. So the way to get through this is when you get to the bag and shot boxing, drop your chin, relax your neck, and then here, start throwing your combos and keeping your neck relaxed, trying to relax that while you're doing the rest of your work. And that's going to slowly allow you to relax your neck while you're throwing and that's gonna save you a lot of everything, energy, efficiency, and focus in your boxing. All right, number two, holding your breath. This is probably the most common one for boxers, new boxers. Don't worry about the inhalation. The inhalation will take care of itself. Your goal is to get the air out. Is If you're not in the action, right? Or if you're in the action, <laughs> is to be exhaling, breathing, getting that air out. When you're on the bag, when you're in shadow boxing, uh, when you're doing your footwork, <laughs> you gotta focus on getting that air out. Holding your breath, all you gotta think is just if you were to go swimming and you start holding your breath and working, you're not gonna last very long. You're gonna be extra good for the first maybe lap of the pool or whatever you go a lap and then all of a sudden it's gonna catch up with you. So make sure that you are focusing on that exhalation in everything you do. Now, I'm gonna link, the, I have other videos that address these topics specifically, so for the ones that I have a video for, I'm gonna leave a list of those videos in the video description below, and then you can go check out the video that I have specifically on that issue, so go check it out. All right, number three. This is not being aware of what you do after your offense. Now, after your offense, there are three things you're generally gonna do. You're gonna step out, out of range, because you are in range. You're gonna cover to block to be prepared for something that's going on, or you're gonna move your head. Now, stepping back can be stepping back or it can be stepping out to the side. So you gotta either have footwork, hands covering, or head movement. And you gotta build those habits into your scenario-based boxing. So if you were doing your training and it's scenario-based, like here, you're working on shadow boxing and creating angles, you're gonna either move or you're gonna cover because you're inside like this, or you're gonna move your feet out. You're gonna get back out. So build those into your boxing here. Huh, I'm out. Okay, my hands are down and I'm out. Okay, here I go. I cover or I block and then counter and then I move my head and then I'm out. You got to get your head moving, your hands or your feet. If you're working drills, then it's okay. You know, you're there for the sake of the drill. You're there for the sake of the technique. That's fine because you have your drill training, your scenario-based training. You're doing the scenario-based training, you got to complete the scenario. The scenario is 
When you're done, if you're not staying in there to work, boom, 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 then you're either uh, moving your feet back or you're moving your head and getting out. So try to stay fluid with the continuity of boxing. All right, number four, on your punches, beginners, not getting that full shoulder release. So here I punch. Here, look at this. Here, the punch ends here, but these all go together. Boom. See this? Not here. Here. So you don't want to bench press your punch. You want it to full, come like almost like your shoulder is going to come off, like right out of the socket. So that just comes from practice and understanding and being aware, that full release of the shoulder, trying to get that arm all the way out. You don't have to do anything, any special snaps or pops. You just have to make sure that that arm comes all the way forward, okay, it's sort of a rounded back. You don't really have to exaggerate it. I would say it's more that you just want to prevent this. You don't have to necessarily go all out into that, but just prevent this sort of lockdown in your punches. Let that shoulder come out. Let that, that shoulder blade release into your punches so you don't just end up like this with the arm stuck back. That's a, a common one for beginners because beginners, they're often very tight, you know, when they first start boxing. All right, number five is how you put your weight leaning, especially beginners leaning forward like this. A lot of us in, in the beginning like to think, oh, we're aggressive, we're getting into our stance, and we lean forward and put our weight forward. The problem is if you put your weight forward, when you want to suddenly go forward, you have to shift your weight back to the back foot. Even if you don't see it, that's what's happening. You have to put weight onto that back foot to get it going, so there's a small shift. Also, I find if your weight isn't even 50-50 or even slightly back, that front leg tends to really tire out. So you want to really get yourself in that habit of being right in the middle, getting your weight over top of your body, not leaning forward. And I have some lower body drills for this and some drills in some other videos. Of course, I'm going to link to them below and you can go check out how you can help yourself with that to overcome this problem. But be careful that you're not here leaning forward, especially your head past your front knee. You don't want this head past the front knee. You want to be over top. You want your head over top of your center right here. It's okay if you're shifting or whatever, and then you can come back to your center line, but be careful that this isn't your default position to be leaning forward. All right, mistakes. This is more on the tactical sparring side. One of the common ones I see is standing still before you are about to attack or standing still all the time. So I'm here in front of my sparring partner, and then boom, I go, right? And then maybe I move and then I'm here. Okay, and every time I stand still, they know something's about to come. Now, you don't always have to be attacking off of movement. Let's say I'm moving a little bit, a little bit, boom, boom, boom. I'm moving a little bit, boom, 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 right? And then maybe I'm staying still and faking and then moving and stay still and then go. It's, there's nothing really wrong with staying still so long as that's not the only thing you're doing. You don't want to be in the situation where Every time you're standing still, that's when the attack is about to come. Because then what happens is any opponent knows, oh, well, they're there in front of me. Now they're moving, so now they're attacking, and they can either get out and take off to thwart your attack, or they can start throwing while you're throwing. You're easy to time. So you want to mix it up. A little bit of movement, <laughs> bop. You know, a little bit of movement, bop, bop. Then stay still and fake it, and then go, right? Sort of play around with the when, and don't always be standing still in front of your opponent before you attack. Number seven, this is one of the ones I talked about in another video and I had a problem with, especially my first year of boxing, is rising up to get to that taller opponent. Usually what happens when you rise up is because you haven't gotten your feet there. You haven't gotten yourself actually this way. So if I haven't got myself that way, I wanna use this to get closer, but I, wanna, I need to get myself in this way. That's going to come from overall awareness of your boxing and your skills. Are you moving your head? Are you bringing your feet? Are you moving fast enough? Are you getting close enough before you start your attack? You want to make sure that you're not starting from way out far. Or if you're way out far, you want to get in to where you want to be first, and then you can start your attack. Be careful of this rising up. And really what that takes is a conscious awareness in your shadow boxing. Everything to stay low. Stay low, stay low. On the back, stay low, or at least stay in your stance. Just sort of work that out of your system. It takes a while to work it out if you have that bad habit. All right, number eight. Here's another one along the lines of standing still. This is more tactical. Always going with the same combos. Always starting with the same patterns. 
you become predictable. You got to have some different patterns, some different ways to start. So, of course, we got the jab, pop, okay, jab to the body, pop. Then you got fake and then hook. And then here you got the right hand to the body, right, right hand up top, right. So you, you got to know all the different ways to start and the combos that feed off of it. Of course, most things are going to work off the jab. Sometimes the start is not really exactly what technique you're going with, but how committed you are to that technique. So as you see like Lomachenko, or let's say you saw Pacquiao against Broner, you know, touching the jab, touching the jab, touch, faking low, faking low, touching, and then bam, bam, then he goes with his combo. So be careful not always to start with the same thing in the same way. All right, number nine. When beginners start learning boxing, they want to do their best. They want to throw their best punches. They want to give their best performance in the gym all the time. And what that leads to is what I would say, what I would call a high quality output or high quality work. You're throwing one, two, three. Oh, I want it to be the best. One, two, three. Two, three, six, three. Oh, I want it to be the best. One, three. Now, as a beginner, you don't realize how much muscle fiber is not used in boxing or as you become more efficient there's a lot of your body that is not used and that's how your boxing becomes more efficient and that's how you say preserve energy uh, for the long run make your technique smoother and better when you're doing the high quality training high performance training you're almost uh, teaching your body to tighten up all the time you haven't really trained your body to to loosen so what you want to do is you want to spend some drills at the end of your bag work or at the end of your boxing or a few rounds, you want to just be loose and relaxed. You want to be a little bit <laughs> lazy with it. I, my hook didn't really improve until I got a little bit lazy with it. I had to really, <laughs> really get loose. And it takes a while. Some of it is an acquired feeling that even now as I throw it, I can feel a little bit of tightness. It's not like, let's say I've been training 10 rounds a day for months. So it's partly to keep in mind, and it's also partly putting in the volume. But you want to take some rounds <laughs> and be a little bit lazy. <laughs> Let yourself be loose. Put very little effort. And then, <clears throat> then you can start to recruit and go hard. And you're going to see that as you sort of undo a lot of what doesn't need to be used, you're going to become faster, you're going to become more efficient, and you're going to have a lot more stamina training some of your, your time in a relaxed, easy state, not always all out full power. All right, number 10. Beginner boxers, we think it's all about the upper body. We think it's all about the punches and the core. We underestimate how much lower body is involved. Both legs at all times are working. They are taking you to your target. They are taking you away from your target. And every time you lock down that punch, your body has to lock down. Your, these two legs have to hold you in place. With all that power coming out, your body has to stabilize. I remember in my early fights, especially in my early fights, I would move around, and I didn't necessarily want to go in. And all I'd hear my, my coach say, now, Jason, now, Jason. And I knew I had to go because I heard him. And you'd be surprised how much energy it takes sometimes, especially in the later rounds, to launch from where you are to your opponent. Be like, oh, I got to go all the way there to this guy, even though he's only two, three feet away. So you, you want to make sure that your lower body is trained. For me, one of the game changers was burpees. And I know a lot of you don't like burpees, uh, but it was a game changer for me. Once I could start doing burpees, let's say 105 minutes, uh, then I had the endurance to keep launching and launching. But there's other exercises too. I'm going to leave a burpee video below that I have and a lower body stability video that I have so you can get the isometric uh, endurance and stamina. Beginners underestimate how much lower body there is in boxing. We like to box, hit the pads, hit the bag, uh, speed bag. Everything is all up here. Maybe a little bit of skipping rope. We don't really condition the legs. And once you do, that's going to be a game changer for you. You're going to see some huge improvements working the lower body really hard. All right, number 11, flinching, blinking. This is something that happens to almost everybody. It's really hard to get rid of in the beginning and there almost isn't really a quick solution to it. Part of it is awareness. A part of it is, okay, if you start to focus a soft center on the person and you start to become aware of it, because a lot of times, even though you don't flinch or blink, you still, especially I found myself, even the first year in boxing, tending, because I moved my head, tending to look away and losing sight of the opponent. So a lot of it is keeping those eyes wide and ready. Muhammad Ali styles, keeping them on the opponent, keeping them on the target. So a little bit of awareness, 
give yourself a reminder between rounds. So that's going to help at least with the patterning, to give yourself a little reminder. But as a drill, get somebody, anybody, they don't have to be a good boxer, to put on the gloves and just start. Sometimes the less of a good boxer they are and the more unorthodox, the better, because they throw some weird stuff at you. Get them to throw on the gloves, and you just get your hands up, and you look at them. Don't look at the gloves. Don't look at this. Okay, you look at them and let them just beat on you. Let them beat on you and just keep your eyes focused, okay? And you, you may not get it all at once, but you're starting to train yourself to keep your eyes open when the stuff is coming at you. So even if you just get a friend, a sibling, or someone just to start playing with you with the gloves, <laughs> throw them at you. If you can get a, a boxing partner in the gym, that's going to be even better for them to really work you. And that's going to help you untrain or train your way out of the flinch and sort of the blink reflex. Just get those partner drills in. If you don't have a partner, just get anybody to put on the gloves and sort of mess and play around with you just to undo that habit. All right, last one, number 12, the 12th way you're just entirely messing up your boxing. <laughs> not throwing hooks from all ranges or not realizing that they're all ranges. And again, this isn't a mistake unto itself. It's really about awareness. So if I'm here always throwing my hook at this range, often what happens is when you get somebody who's far and you want to throw the hook at long range or at longer range, all you got to do if you want to see long range hooks, watch uh, Tyson versus Carl the Truth Williams. Watch any Tyson fight. Roy Jones versus Montel Griffin II, uh, Trinidad versus William Joppy. I mean, anybody who's, who's watching boxing is going to see different ranges of hooks. Even when you see Pacquiao against Mayweather, you see Pacquiao going for that big right hook where Mayweather's pulling, you see it's a long range hook. So if you don't train the different ranges of hooks, what happens when your opponent is far, you'll feel like you have to get your whole body there in order to throw your standard hook. So instead of the arm doing the work for you, you're always going to have to get your body there and that takes up a lot of energy. The other problem that you have is that when people get inside, you're used to throwing your hook here that in order to hit that person, you feel like you have to get away to get at your ideal range. So you want to work on your hook close, right in short, <laughs> right here, like as if somebody's head is right there. You should be able to, <laughs> to catch them right in front of you. Mid-range, medium, long, <laughs> and even long range. Get used to doing that. and You don't even have to work too hard. Just <laughs> feed it. <laughs> Throw it light. <laughs> Throw it light. Get yourself used to throwing hooks at all those ranges so that you can be ready for anybody who's moving at any distance. Of course, you guys know where to go to get all your boxing stuff, precisionstriking.com. I got instructionals there. I got uh, blog posts there, stuff you can read and learn more about boxing, precisionstriking.com. I also have new gloves coming soon, a new batch. And just to tell you quickly, uh, I, I'm partnered with an organization, USG, Ultimate Sports Gear, who is partnered with the Canadian Professional Boxing Council, uh, which basically means that they're providing gloves for the professional fights that are happening in Canada. Not all the fights, but they're providing gloves for a lot of the pro fights that are happening in Canada. And I brought my glove to them to see if they could redesign it to make it a little bit better, uh, to up the quality a bit. So I'm getting a redesigned heavy hitters bag glove and that should be coming in about three weeks. It's going to look really nice. It's going to be built nice. It's going to feel nice. It's going to be the best glove that you can get your hands on for a really good price. And I'm excited about that. That should be happening. Look out for that in about uh, two to three weeks on my website. But in the meantime, keep your hands up, your chin down, eyes on the prize. Peace.